Did you know words are actual things? They have tangibility. What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus, and I want to welcome you to the Shine Life family. This is a place we study the Word of God on a daily basis, learning the scriptures for ourselves so we can put it to work in our lives and see tremendous results. Well, I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris. The best devotional there is in the whole world. And we do a study on this every single day. Um, you might not be able to see the Rhapsody today. I got, I'm working on something. You might have technical difficulties today, but you can hear me. That's all that matters. I'm going to read the Rhapsody for you. And we're going to discuss the scriptures. We're going to go deep into the scriptures, learning God's word. So don't be in a rush to leave. If it's your first time watching, make sure you do subscribe. We learn the word every single day and you can search for more videos on this channel as countless videos covering different topics that's going to bless you tremendously and i want to play, pray with you so don't be in a rush to go anywhere so today's topic we're talking about words are things did you know words are actual things and our theme scripture is from taken from the book of acts chapter 20 in verse 24 let me read it it says but none of these things move me Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Well, the topic is not necessarily what Paul is saying here, but it's, it's, the, it's that statement that he said, none of these things. So let me read the rap. The rap that he says, things in this scripture above, in the scripture I just read to you, is translated from the word so the word things i just said none of these things movie is translated from the greek word logos which is translated word in john chapter 1 verse 1 which says in the beginning was the word in the verses preceding our theme verse so the the verses before the verse i read to you guys they had been prophetic words about the fierce persecution apostle paul will face in Jerusalem and in spite of everything that had been said Paul submitted none of these things move me he referred to the words that had been spoken as things <laughs> you know what I'm saying so he, he was not necessarily he could have said none of these words move me because if he, if I go back actually and read for you um uh, uh, from verse 7, it says, Save the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying, Bonds and afflictions abide me. So there was a witness from the Spirit to saying, saying. So these were words. But Paul said, none of these things. He, he referred to the words as things. Because words are actual things. He could have well, as well have said, none of these words move me. That's because in the kingdom of God, words are things. They are spiritual particles, oh dear Lord, spiritual substance and have spiritual tangibility. Every word that comes out of your mouth is a thing that will never be destroyed because it is of spiritual origin. When it goes out of you, it represents you everywhere. The only thing that can destroy and render it powerless is another word from you. Think about that for a minute, moment. It says words, you know, because we, 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 we think based on what we've been taught in school, in chemistry and in math and everything. We think, oh, unless it has substance, unless we can touch it and feel it, it is nothing. A thing refers to something you can touch. There has to be a tangibility. But let me show you something. Uh, same scripture. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11, chapter 11, is it? Let's start from verse 1. Even it, it's amazing. From verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance. Faith is actual substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's actual substance. That's not even where I'm going. Verse 3 says, Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed, the aeons, I mean the ages. The ages, this is amazing. 
their worlds does not necessarily mean the, the universe or the, the, the earth or the cosmos. No, it's talking about a period of time or um, an age, uh, an age, a period, a time period, an era. It says, through faith, we understand the worlds, your world, my world, were framed by the word of God. Then he says, so things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Oh, my God. He says, the things that you see did not come from things that existed where you could touch. So what gave birth to the physical things that we see? He says, the word of God. They were framed by the word. The word is spiritual substance. It is tangible. Just because you cannot see, if what cannot be seen gave birth to what can be seen. What tells you what cannot be seen? That means what cannot be seen is substance. It gave birth to what you can see. It's not the other way around. What you can see did not give birth to what you... No, it says what you... Is, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. This is big. This is huge. Nothing was... The things that you see did not come from what existed with your physical what you could see it came from the unseen realm from spiritual materiality from spiritual substance from spiritual tangibility spiritual particles design the material world that's a principle so that means if you want to see something we need to start from the spiritual because that's the real substance that gave birth to what we can see oh man so um, I'm, I'm, I'm reading rap. So Jesus said, any word that you speak that is useless, you will give account of it in the day of judgment. That's in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. That tells you the power and the importance of words. They are, they are of spiritual value. How you form and use them is your responsibility for which you will give account. So we have, we have words. God gives us the words to speak. And we can use those words to design the kind of life we want to live. This is amazing. This, this, this gives joy to know like you can create something. Not by the physicality of what exists. You can create it from God's word. From the non-existent. And you bring it to pass to be existent by your words. Because your words are things. They are particles, spiritual particles, spiritual substance, spiritual tangibility. It makes no difference what your struggles in life have been. You can recreate your world by your words. Jesus said, you shall have what you say. That's in Mark chapter 11 verse 23. That's where life and the power, that's where your life and the power to shape it, all right, is words. Speak the right words, God's words about your life and situation. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I want to read... Uh, Dear Lord, dear Lord, hold on, hold on a second. I want to find a scripture here. So as a child of God, right? Your life is really up to you. You create your situation, either good or bad. If you know the last 10 years have been, haven't been as beautiful as God would have them, you can change things now and recreate your next 10 years to be what God has destined for you to be. It doesn't matter the struggles in your life. You can recreate your world by your words. The part to shape it all right is your words. That's why I'm reading here in Hebrews 11 says, Through faith we understand the worlds were framed. Framed meaning they were designed. That means your aeon. That means how things should go with you in your life for the next 10 years, for the next 5 years. He says, you can, sh you can frame it. Frame. I remember Pascal said, frame here means catatizo. It means to repair. It means to mend. It means... To create, it means to fix. So if everything, if something was wrong in your aeon, it, here the words mean 
your aeon, your world, your world. You're not talking about the cosmos, like the universe. I'm talking about like your world. Like you said, someone saying, um, this is Keisha's world, how things are going on in our, in our own world. She's in her own world. The lives and times of of this person, the era. That's what it means. It says you can you can you can frame how the next ten years could be in your life. What what should come into your life? Who should come into your life? What things should come into your life? How should your life be go, should go? You say you can frame it. You can design your life. Oh, that's a perfect word. You can have a custom design, custom build life by the word of God, so that you can design it by God's word. That things that are seen. Will not, will not be made from the things which do appear. You frame your world not by the things that you see, but God's by God's word, the invisible material. You use that to design your world, to design, to have a design world, design a world where everything is right, where you design your health, where you design how your kids will turn up, where you design how your future will be, where house you live in, what neighborhood you live in, what car you drive, what houses you have. You design your world by God's word. You don't wait for it. You frame, you frame your world, design it ahead of time and walk in that light. You, whatever you say is what will become. Your words are important. You need a book of um what book is there? Book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter C let's find this. If I wrote a book of Proverbs chapter six verse two says Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. So positive and negative. You can trap your life. You can put yourself in danger. You can by the world, saying the wrong things, or you can create the right things in your life. You can bring in the right things by having a custom built life by your words, because words are spiritual material. You you are actually building your life by these spiritual blocks, spiritual bricks. You're laying the bricks with your words amazing so um let's take this confession together i want you to say this after me the word of god is in my heart and in my mouth even the word of truth which i've received my words are potent bringing forth victories increase promotion and abundance for me my life is the testimony of god's grace glory excellence praise god forevermore well you can read further studies in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 romans chapter 10 verse 8 proverbs chapter 6 verse 2 we just read it for you and if you're following one year bible plan the books you need to read is philippians chapter 3 verse 12 and philippians chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 in Isaiah chapter 40 and 41. If you're following a two-year Bible plan, you need to read John chapter 4, verse 1 to 9, 1 Kings chapter 10 and 11. I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. I, I know you, you you might not be able to see the words. I'm working on it. Don't worry about it. But God's word is coming to you. And put it to work. Frame your world with the words of God. Write your confessions on the comment section. Design your life. What is your life going to be like in the next five years? What is your life going to look like in the next 10 years? If you don't plan for it right now, the devil will throw things at you and, 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 and design your, your life for you. But you don't want that. You consciously frame your world. Frame your aeon. It says we, through faith we understand <laughs> that the worlds, the worlds there means aeon, your ages, your world, your world were framed by God's word. They were repaired. Whatever was wrong, whatever you, whatever is wrong in your life right now, you can you can um you can repair it by God's word. You can fix it by saying the right things. The remedy is in your mouth. This is uh uh a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Oh, maybe let me find out. Oh my God, so much to talk about. Let's find out. That's in uh so I'm reading the book of Proverbs chapter. 15 and verse 4 says a wholesome
tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness then is a breach in the spirit. That means the right words. If you speak the right words, they'll bring health to your body. If you speak perverse words, they'll bring sickness and disease to your body. This is a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. You can create life and health for your body by your words. If you, if you talk wrongly, you are creating a breach in the spirit. And it's just dangerous. Speak the right words concerning your health. Create divine life. Not even create. Stay up the life of God in you. Stay up eternal life by your words. Well, well, well. So make sure you leave me a comments below. Make, make your confessions designing your world. And I want to pray for you. If you're not born again, if you don't know Jesus as the Lord and Savior, this is your hour for you to receive salvation. Because Jesus came and died on that cross for you. And God raised him again from the dead. And he said, whoever will believe in me will receive eternal life. And all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ with all your heart. Believe that God he died for you and God raised him from the dead. And confess him as the Lord of your life. And you receive the life of God in your spirit. So I want you to say this confession after me. And mean it with all your heart. Just say this after me. Oh Lord God. I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. I believe he died for me. And God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. If you said that prayer, congratulations, you're born again. It's as simple as that. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you leave me a comment if you said this prayer because I want to pray with you. And yeah, welcome to the family. And I want to pray for anyone else that's watching that the blessings of God will remain with you and with your family. That you will walk in favor like never before. None of your steps shall slide. God's favor is upon you strong. God's grace urges you on, propelling you forward only. Nothing can successfully stand your way. In all these things, you are more than a conqueror. A champion for all time. Victorious always, ahead only, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, well, congratulations. Until next time, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.